Man, I've been having a tough time keeping up with my videos here, but working in a small space and trying to get so many things done really isn't working too well for me. But I think on my last video I had this talked about tearing this pump apart because it was leaking like a sieve. Got it apart and somebody had welded the uh, input shaft into the pump because it had broke and they uh, didn't quite get it straight so it's all galled up inside but I got a new seal and it works for the most part but its days are numbered. Can't seem to find the right shaft for that pump so I think I'm going to end up changing out this whole uh, can't really see it very well, but getting up the light. There's a sh the shaft right there going through the center underneath the radiator, and then there's a coupler on the uh, crankshaft pulley. And I can get one that'll fit that same bolt pattern, so I'm going to change it out for like a probably a 10 spline one inch. That's a six spline one inch, and it's pretty worn on one end for sure. So change that out. Put a probably a 18 or 20 GPM pump in it because I'm gonna be adding some stuff to it. Another hydraulic circuit on the front, and two hydraulic circuits on the back probably. And Lord knows what else, but um. Anyway, that's back together. These, this um, piece that they built right here, I thought, oh yeah, that'll be great. I'll just weld on my skid steer brackets and we'll be in business. Well, yeah, it's not, not even close. It's not going to work anywhere near like that. Not to mention they don't have this, oh, this pivot pin fully boxed, so... I'm not going to want it like that. So I'm going to end up taking this bracket off and uh, basically starting over. I'm going to have to probably cut that bracket down and uh, build a new pin box here and a new pin attachment here and that way we can get, a, get the machine a little bit closer to the, to the bucket. And this geometry is wrong, so it wouldn't have enough breakout force to curl the bucket back because it doesn't have enough leverage. It's the cylinders are too close to here, and they're so close, in fact, that both these cyl these cylinder rods got bent. So they leak like sieves. So I'm going to reseal them, and when I have them apart to reseal them, I'm going to try to straighten those rods. If I can't do that, then, well, then I'm either going to be trying to find a new cylinder or, uh, or buying a new rod if it's still available. It might still be available, or at least one comparable might still be available, but I don't know. I'll have to look. But I ordered some uh, DOM tubing that's DOM, draw, drawn over mandrel. Basically, it's just a... What I got was a quarter inch wall. Um, it would be inch and three quarter outside diameter, so which will give me inch and a quarter inside diameter. I might have to ream it out a little bit, but basically that's what I'm going to use to make my bushings for my new cylinder attachment points. But I had hoped that this was going to be a uh, quick, you know weld her on there and get her going and uh, <sighs> use it for the winter and as the backup loader so that because the other tractor the transmission the shuttle transmission needs rebuilt it's getting slower and slower to lift to shift into forward so hopefully I can just stall it until spring and then pull it out and rebuild it and this thing I don't think is going to be done anytime soon. It's going to be kind of a whittle project it's turning out because I just can't get this crap done. But 
I guess that's it for now. I've got some other... I got some picked up some stuff on an auction, and I'll get a video of that here shortly. I think I'm going to just pull this thing out today and clean it up, clean the floor up, and... Um, wait for my dom tubing to show up. I'm going to pull that, go ahead and pull this uh, bracket off of there before I take it out. Start figuring something out. Anyway, more to come.